Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here, and we are continuing our talk on comprehension and assessment. And just generally, how do you teach meaning making in the upper elementary schools? And one of those things we constantly talk about is you really never can know what somebody comprehends about a text. And so we use tasks to elicit evidence of their knowledge growth. And that's why it's really hard to separate reading and writing in the literacy classroom. One of the big pushes in the Common Core State Standards was to increase the amount of informational texts read in the elementary schools and to increase the amount of writing to um, move away from just narrative writing um, or just one essay per year. And you see more compare and contrast. But one of the bigger pushes was for the increase in argumentative writing in elementary schools using multiple sources. So what does this have to do with reading comprehension you're asking? Well, let's think about it. If you have a prior belief and you're reading a book, what happens? What ha Think about it. When you're doing reading comprehension, we have prior knowledge, right? We talked about that, especially if we're using those informational processing theories. Um, this is your existing schema. And then you have input and output stuff coming in from the book you're reading. You have to combine that information. So what happens? Well, really, when it comes to argument of writing, what happens is my belief bias. This when we have our students do argument writings, we rely too heavy on the my belief bias, or we have the reading comprehension or the writing skills impacted by a belief bias. What does research say about my belief bias? Well, it, it's a kind of confirmation bias. And what happens is when we give students and have them choose a topic to research and write about for argument writing purposes, they can always find more arguments that support their position. And you can read Stanovich, uh, 2007. The term my bias comes from Perkins in 1985. Um, but it's this idea that, you know, you have to think about your biases. And when you are given, when you pick a position you already believe in, you will find more support for that position than you will find for counter positions. So what this really means is the way that we teach argument of writing in school, it does not reinforce or build reasoning skills. But why is that important? When you think about it, the way that we teach argument of writing in school today traces back to a gentleman named Tolman who came out with his um, model of um, argumentation back in the 50s. But really, this traces all the way back to like ethos, pathos, and logos from the Greeks. Um, in Western academic traditions, argumentation and arguing is considered the highest form of discourse and knowledge. Now, we can talk about what effect that has had on history and think about alternative histories if, say, reflection was considered the highest form of knowledge in Western culture and what that might have meant for human history. But we're neither here nor there. We are in today. And argumentation is a major part of the academic discourses that our students face, especially in elementary schools now that we have the common core. So what do we do about this confirmation bias? about this my side bias. Well, we have proven that we can manipulate instruction to really play with and overcome the my side bias and have our argument of writing and our multiple source reading actually help build reasoning skills. What does that look like in the classroom? And how do we do it? Really, it's about getting people to consider multiple perspectives. I'm not even the biggest fan of the word bias because to me it's not so much about right or wrong or this is bias as in as in it's manipulative oftentimes it's just that's the perspective that's the story you bring to the to the new evidence that you're integrating from your readings 
So instead of getting people to write to their bias that they already have, we have to get students to consider multiple perspectives. Look at, say, some of the graphic organizers we would use in elementary school. Now, this is a classic one. Have your position. Give me three reasons. Have a conclusion. That's, you know, we always start with having people, what's better, cats or dogs? And then you pick it. And then you go research why dogs are better. Uh, you know, you have one reason here, one reason here, one reason there. Very common graphic organizer. But this relies on cognitive bias. It will be impacted by my bias. It does very little to improve reasoning skills. And if you're not improving reasoning skills, are you improving their reading comprehension skills? Are you improving their writing skills? So instead, I have tasked you each to learn and use what we call the argumentative V diagram. And here, you do your position last. So what happens is if I was doing cats versus dogs again, I would come up with three reasons why dogs are better than cats. I would then come up with three reasons why cats are better than dogs. And then if possible, you know, I would then come up with what would the dog owners say to prove the cat owners wrong? What would the cat owners say to prove the dog owners wrong? Then I tell my students to develop a position. This makes, this forces them to consider both perspectives before they write. It forces them to research both sides of an issue. It helps to combat my side bias. More so, it also teaches kids an important technique. You know, the genre that they're going to have, to, to, you know, the, the essay test genre that only exists in school. Once they graduate, they'll never have it. The high stakes essay tests, that only exists on the SBAC. It only happens once a year. It does, it will never ever happen again in, in, in their history once they get out of school. So, you know, teaching them to use the V diagram could be a survival technique because you, they might learn, oh, wait a minute, it'll be way easier to get a better grade arguing the side I don't believe in. Because essay writing as a test is its own kind of genre. And it really doesn't matter what your position is. It's how well can you provide evidence of your writing skills. But most importantly, when we're thinking about this topic, it's about considering those perspectives. So what do you have to consider? We're looking at two issues in reading comprehension research. One is, it's basically the question is, do we spend too much time on strategy instruction in elementary school reading comprehension classes? Position one is, yes, we need to focus more on core knowledge and background knowledge. Position two is, no, strategy instruction works. All right, and so you have to investigate what you have to investigate and research both sides of the issues, then take a position. Your assignment is to complete this argumentative the diagram. That's it, folks. Talk to you soon.